Good morning. Good to see you. Well, that was pretty poor. Good morning. That's a little bit better. Uh, we are so glad to see everyone, and uh, we appreciate what every week. I don't know what it is. Uh, I think it's just the, the social distancing thing, the thing where everybody's kind of spread out. Uh, the chairs are spread out. You're spread out. But every week, uh, you guys you guys are like giving me heart palpitations because uh, it gets about 10 minutes till, and I, I'm thinking nobody's coming. And uh, but then more you guys are just rolling in, and uh, we appreciate it or kind of getting where you're at. And so we, we appreciate you being in services. Uh, today is no doubt a special day. Uh, we are going to be recognizing our graduates, and so we're looking forward uh, to, uh, to kind of everything that God has in store for us today. Brother Tommy uh, is actually going to be preaching today and sharing the message, uh, not only for the graduates, but for all of us. And so we're looking forward uh, to having uh, the, the services be everything that God wants it to be. Um, let me also just make mention, we've got... Uh, a few of these. Now, if you are not getting uh, our emails yet, I know some of you have turned in uh, your cards, and if you've not done that yet, please do so. There's one at every entrance. Uh, you can grab one of those cards, get it filled out, bring it back in, uh, turn it into uh, just one of the, the ushers at the doors or lay the conference plate. Uh, we're going to take it care of, but we're still, uh, Kathy's far more ahead than I am on getting all of that information uh, transferred, but uh, we're, we're working on getting all of those emails uh, updated as well, and so uh, anyway, make, make sure you bring those in, but if you are not getting an email uh, and you would like a prayer list, uh, we've got a few of these around. There should be some at each door. Uh, if you do not get one and would like to get one, uh, let me know. I'll run and make a copy real quick for you. Uh, but, uh, but there are a couple of prayer requests that we want to make mention of uh, this morning. Of course, continue to pray uh, for the Ben Smith family. Uh, this is Judy's brother. Uh, of course, he was uh, in, always get it confused, Indiana. Is that right? Um, and so uh, they had just a, a family a graveside service for him this week. Uh, but continue to pray for that family. The good news is uh, Ben was a, was a child of God. And so we know exactly uh, where he's at. We know uh, that we will see him again. Uh, but uh, still the heart uh, certainly is a, a mourning uh, process. And so continue to pray for all the family members if you would. Um, there's many other prayer requests that are on the list. Again, we're sending these out by email, uh, so if you're, or you can grab one at the door. Uh, but I do want to make mention of just a couple. Bill Kimbrough uh, will be having surgery uh, tomorrow. And so if you would, uh, they're very anxious. Of course, uh, Brother Bill's health has not been good for quite some time. And uh, so they're very uh, apprehensive. Uh, about this surgery for Bill, and so if you would pray for him. Uh, also pray for Sister Darlene Wilson. Uh, Jerry's having to run solo back there, uh, but uh, Darlene has a blood clot. Uh, she's doing well, uh, and I think they've got, they're hopefully got it under control. Uh, if they can keep Darlene under control, uh, they'll have the blood clot under control. And so uh, they did put her on some uh, some blood thinners trying to get that taken care of. It's causing a little bit of pain. Uh, but if you would, just uh, just remember uh, Sister Darlene and then, of course, uh, also Jerry and all the rest of the family as well as they uh, deal with that. Um, also, I want to make mention of something else that's coming up uh, for our graduates uh, at First Baptist Church. It, this is... It is a community event. Uh, somebody asked uh, earlier, is, is this just for First Baptist? No, this, this is a community uh, baccalaureate service for all of our graduates, their families, and uh, their church families. Uh, First Baptist is simply hosting it. Uh, they have one of the larger sanctuaries that we felt like we could uh, have the social distancing and have all of those things in place. And so uh, this coming Thursday at 7 o'clock at First Baptist will be uh, the Community Baccalaureate Service. I hope all of our, our graduates can come. Uh, Brother Tommy, they will be in 
necks and gowns, is that right? Uh, we don't know. Yes. Okay. <laughs> right? Yes, we always have in the past. Okay. So, uh, so graduates, bring your caps and gowns. Uh, family come and just celebrate uh, our, our graduates here at the high school. I know a lot of our rural schools um, have already had their graduations or are working towards having their graduations. And so uh, it has certainly been uh, pretty chaotic. Of course, our high school graduation uh, will be held this coming Saturday, if no rain. And uh, so they're, 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 they're needing over a thousand chairs. Uh, now imagine that. Uh, we've got about 150 that we're loaning them. But listen, 150 is a long ways from 1,000. <laughs> so uh, it, is, it is a logistical nightmare uh, is, is the best way to put it. So they're having to beg, borrow, plead, and try to get stuff from anywhere and everywhere uh, that they can. But, uh, but anyway, uh, so, so we're, we're, a lot of effort is going into making uh, all of our graduates feel special. But do remember the baccalaureate service. Uh, this is a great way for you as a church member uh, to, to not only recognize uh, our graduates here today, but also to recognize them in the community. And so you're welcome to come uh, to that service. Uh, again, that's this coming Thursday, uh, June the 4th at 7 o'clock. Uh, again, that'll be at the First Baptist uh, Church there in their sanctuary. Uh, I'm going to have Tommy come, and uh, we've been trying to do this each week. Um, yeah, we're, we're getting a little better every week, maybe. Uh, I even tried to send out something on Facebook so you guys could practice. Roosevelt, did you practice? She said she's too old. Oh, she's too old. All right. Yeah. How late did you, did you practice? No. I can, I can see we've not practiced. But we're going we're gonna to try a new song, but it's a song all of you know uh, because you've heard it your whole life more than likely. Well, not your whole life. But for a long time in church, this is a pretty, pretty old, familiar song. So everybody stand with us if you would. And uh, we're going to sing, what's the name of it? Yes. An old familiar song. Hey, parents, here's, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I need your help, okay? Because uh, there's like no participation. Uh, Ray and Carly have been ridiculing me every week because they watch this. And uh, it's embarrassing, you know? Like, so if you guys help me. It'd be tremendous, okay? Well, we're doing it with kids, right? Well, like, getting up here and dancing by myself, it's like me asking a girl to date. Like, it's just really embarrassing, and I always leave sweat. So please, just help me out, okay? So, before you start, get some dancers, okay? Every move I make, I make in you. You make me move, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Woo, woo. I'm already breathing heavy. Uh, every step I take, I think in you. Every step I take, I think in you. Uh, waves of mercy, waves of grace, everywhere I look, I see your face. Your love has captured me. Oh my God, this love, how can it be? There's a text, okay? No, I'm kidding. You guys are ready to get through this? Let's do this, all right? Hit it. I want to say that. <laughs>
doing that. <laughs> but, I mean, Mark even had the na 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 stuff going. And so, uh, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, this is my last COVID-19 uh, memory. And I told uh, this individual, I said, because they've been after me every week. When, when are you going to mention ours? When are you going to mention ours? Uh, I said, I saved the best for last. And so, uh, my last COVID-19 pandemic uh, worldwide shutdown memory uh, goes to none other uh, than Megan <laughs> and Mitch. And uh, this picture, uh, I mean, man, I tell you, uh, they were marching out. Mitch is a big Top Gun fan uh, and the movie Top Gun. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, they actually walked, marched out uh, to, the, to the theme of to Top Gun, and Mitch was, he was all over it. He was loving it. Uh, plus, he was pretty happy because he just wedded his beautiful bride. And so uh, we are super happy uh, for Megan and Mitch, and we're excited. Uh, listen, their, uh, their wedding and their marriage uh, has certainly not been one without uh, some difficulties. They've had some adversity. Uh, that almost happened immediately, uh, but they're working through it, and they're, they're trusting God uh, to see them through it. And so, uh, Megan and Mitch, we want to say uh, we love you guys, and that was a special memory uh, for me to be a part of the wedding. So, uh, with that in mind, I need to mention a couple of other uh, events for some young people that uh, are part of our church family. And uh, one of those is an upcoming wedding uh, that's going to be taking place, uh, Jerry, this Saturday, right? Uh, this is why you need to pray for Darlene, uh, is they're trying to plan for a wedding this coming Saturday, June the 6th. Uh, and this is uh, Brendan Wilson and Megan James. And, uh, of course, Brendan is the son to Jerry and Darlene. And so uh, they already had a very private uh, ceremony planned. And so uh, they, they kind of already kind of had that intimacy and all of those things kind of already in the works. Uh, but no doubt the pandemic accelerated some of that. And so anyway, you be in prayer for them uh, as they start their life together. Uh, also, on that exact same date, uh, this young couple, you'll recognize Kenan, uh, Kenan Moss, and then uh, his fiance is Deanna, uh, and I don't have my glasses, I must have left them down there, uh, Enderbrook, is that right? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Enderbrook. All right, so uh, they they're also uh, have plans to be wed uh, this coming Saturday, again, in a private uh, family uh, ceremony, and so... Uh, Kenan, of course, grew up in our church, uh, but this couple is very, very active uh, and in some key roles at the Grace Fellowship Church uh, there in Cape Girardeau. And so uh, you pray for Kenan and his fiance as they start their lives together, and uh, we're really excited for you to him. And, uh, uh, the other uh, announcement, and I don't think Mitch and Gail are here. Are they here? No. Am I missing Gail's watching? All right, Gail. All right, this, this one's for you, all right? Uh, so another congratulations goes out to this couple right here. This is Ryan uh, and Katie Harris. This is Mitchell and Gail's uh, son, uh, Ryan. And uh, this is not a wedding announcement. This is actually a birth announcement. And their uh, baby boy was born yesterday. Uh, this is Corbin Neil Harris, 6 pounds, 15 ounces, uh, 20 and a half inches, 13 hours of labor. Yeah, so uh, maybe now you know why Mitch and Gail aren't here possibly. Uh, they may be waiting for this baby to come home, uh, but anyway, uh, they, uh, they, of course, in, with the hospital rules and regulations, they can't. Uh, you know, like only Ryan and uh, his wife were there. None of the rest of the family could be there. And so, uh, but we want to say congratulations. If you want to do a card uh, or a gift for any of these, 
uh, the special uh, things that are happening with some of the young people from our church. Uh, please, you can bring those in, a uh, card or gift, and we will make sure uh, that they get those items uh, from you. And so uh, we, we can't really do showers. We can't really do a lot of the things that we normally do. Uh, but, uh, but we want to make sure uh, that you know uh, that, uh, that these events are taking place. And uh, if nothing else, we want you to pray for them. Uh, listen, I texted Brian last night or yesterday afternoon. Uh, he is one excited day. Uh, I mean, he, his first thing is God has blessed me. And uh, that just, for Ryan, uh, that just means a tremendous amount for him and Katie. And so uh, we're, we're certainly proud uh, for them. Uh, I'm going to have, actually, Ron and the girls have our songs uh, for us today. So we're going to ask you uh, to join us in standing again. Uh, I want to share this verse with you. This first song is called No Longer a Slave. Uh, and it says this, Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son... And if a son, then an heir through God. That's Galatians 4, 7. These songs are very biblically minded. And so we want you to join us in worship and acknowledging uh, the fact that God has been so good to us. So stand with us if you would. And uh, we're going we're gonna to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, and then we're going we're gonna to worship together. Brother Tim, would you care to lead us in prayer, please?
my favorite but least favorite day of the year. Because like I, will, I get to honor these awesome kids, but at the same time, I lose some awesome kids. And it's just, it's really, it's, it's just, oh my gosh, I'm getting emotional already. Uh, but it's, it's an amazing day. You got, like, you students, we're going to talk a little more about it. You guys have gone through so much. You have endured so much through the course of your, of your 12 to 9 years of school. I don't know why I pointed at you like for 9 years, I mean. Uh, he was only there for like 9 years. But anyways, so today's a really special day. And I compare it, like, if, if church camp is like Super Bowl for youth pastors, this is like the playoffs, basically. Right? Uh, my, my, my whole job is just to get things together, to honor you guys, and just love on you guys. Uh, gosh, I'm really losing it already. Uh, so this is a special day. Uh, before we begin, I'm going to need five minutes of like composure time, so I put together a video. So, 
Uh, you can take these, you can read them. And what's really great about them is like if you have a question about anything, if you have a question about sadness, or if you have a question about anger, or if you have a question about uh, whatever it may be, like obviously I'm the worst person to come to, so now I give you a book and things to go to instead, so you can quit blowing up. Anyways, no, on, serious, on a serious note though, I'm really excited to have you guys come to high school. You guys are doing great things. So let's give them a round of applause. It's a big stage, or a small stage. So seniors, uh, come down here. Pretty please, with sugar on top. What's up? Oh, oh, thank you. So you're my assistant today. I can get used to this. Uh, well, while well, well, you're at it, get time pepper. Okay, easy on the answers. All right, so we've got five seniors in front of you today. Uh, so what I want you guys to do, if you don't mind, the only time I'm gonna make you guys pop. So what I want you to do, to take this microphone, just say your name, um, where you graduated from, like your, your planes after high school, okay? Test, 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 come on. Test, 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 there we go. Say your name, where you graduated from, and your planes after high school. Um, I'm Paul Tenez, I'm graduating from uh, the West Plains High School, and I'm planning to be a graphic artist at uh, MSU. Yo, what's that? <laughs> I'm Blaine Thompson, graduating from West Plains High School. Plan on collecting unemployment checks. <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't work out, I may go to University of MSU, study theater arts and psychology, and probably wear a different color other than black. I'm really not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm graduating from West Plains High School. I want to be a CRMA. <coughs> Um, I'm Bree Marlin, I'm graduating from West Plains High School, and I plan to attend MSU here in town and study nursing. Uh, I'm Clay Vincent, uh, I graduated from West Plains High School, and I'm going to attend Lyman School. Nice. Let's give them a huge round of applause. Assistant, you're slacking. They were already supposed to have their stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna call you when you're sleeping now. Uh, <laughs> oh, here, I'll help you help me. Grow up in a time of racial, political, and religious unrest, and I know we all have. 
It's just with social media, with the, with, with the media in general today, it's been amplified, it's been magnified to a extent to where it's just, it's thrown in our face. And these kids have had to endure all that while going to school. But let me tell you this real quick. Today we're not here to talk about the tragedies, we're not here to mourn. Today we're actually, I'm here to talk about success and uplift you guys. Because let me tell you something. Every single one of you guys has the opportunity to be successful. And the cool thing about God is he's an equal opportunity employer. He doesn't care who you are. He doesn't care where you come from. He doesn't call, he care about the color of your skin. He doesn't care about who you voted for. All he cares about is that you follow him. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much. Thank you so much for these kids. Thank you for blessing us with just these amazing students, Lord. And I just want to pray that you continue to bless them, you guide them, and just be with us today, Lord. I pray, I just pray that we were successful in your eyes. I pray that we follow you and that we just run towards you with every step. Um, in every action. We love you so much. We pray this in your name. Amen. So, I'm sorry for starting off on a bummer moment, but let me tell you something. Today's about celebrating the students. And I'm going to tell you guys this right now. I thoroughly believe right now that these kids are going to be world changers. I thoroughly believe that these kids are going to make such a huge impact. An impact that I can't make, an impact that Dennis can't make, an impact that a lot of you parents can't make. And the reason why I say this is because if you look at James, it says this. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And so God right now is working in these students' lives. He's, chip, he's chiseling away. He's molding them. He's creating, he's creating these masterpieces of what he wants to one day be. And I thoroughly believe the reason why you kids right now you students are going through such a hard time is because God's been using you to change this world in a way that we never could. Can I get an amen? Let's wake up. Can I get an amen? amen? Like, if you look at the Bible, if you look at different examples of successful people, you look and you'll see, like, for example, you got Noah. You know, Noah was ridiculed. God put this message on Noah's heart, and he was made fun of. You know, people would walk by like, dude, you're building a boat for what? And then you look, you look at Moses, okay? Moses had to go through so much in his life. Moses, you know, was born in a time where he should have, he should have, been, he should have been executed. He was born in a time um, where there was this religious ruling. And the thing is, he's an outcast from his own, from his own uh, country. You know, he accidentally killed that soldier. And then on top of that, God's like, I'm going to use you. And he's like, I've got a speech impediment. God's like, I don't care. And so Moses had to endure a lot. When you look at David, when David had to go fight Goliath, David was small. He was itty bitty. You know, people were making fun of him as he's walking out of that battle line. He couldn't even wear the armor of the king because he's so small. And yet God used that to make him a powerful ruler. And so that's why it says consider it pure joy when you face trials. Because God is using that moment to really help build your endurance and make you into someone big and powerful. Okay? So you guys can be world changers. I thoroughly believe that. And I thoroughly believe that you're going to be successful. Because like I said, God's an equal opportunity employer. So what does success really mean? Well, there's, I mean, success, the definition of success is this. The accomplishment of aim or purpose. Okay? And you're like, what? So to narrow it down, it also says this. The attainment of popularity or profit. And this broke my heart. So in order to be successful, you have to be popular and you have to be rich, according to society's definition. Well, the thing is, there's 7.6 billion people on this earth right now, and the definition of success is such an arbitrary definition. Because your definition is different from my definition, which is different from his definition, which is different from her definition. So in my personal opinion, there are 7.6 billion definitions of success out there. My version of success for the longest time was this. And if I look back 10 years ago, would I make that taught me happy? So, 10 years ago, I'm about to ship off the basic training. I have no idea what, what I'm going to do with my life. And so I like to picture, what's, what's my future going to look like? And so at that time, I pictured myself, I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. All I knew is I got to an army, I thought I wanted to be a firefighter, I didn't really know. But all I knew is I wanted to be married, I wanted to have kids, I wanted to work in a stable job, I'm going to five, and go on vacation in the summertime. None of those. <laughs> uh, but the thing is this. You know, I look back, and that's my definition of success, okay? Uh, Matthew McConaughey's def definition of success is kind of similar. He talks about, like, his version of a hero is him 10 years from now. He's always chasing who he's going to be 10 years from now. 
And when he gets to that 10 years from now, he doesn't care about his past. He looks, he looks at his present. And that's his version of success, is that person he's going to be 10 years from now. But you have a definition of a success that's different than mine. But let me tell you this. God has the true definition of success. Can I get an amen? Right. Okay, we're still waking up here. It says this. It says in 1 Kings, second thing, which we're really side note real quick. I noticed uh, yesterday as I put something together. A lot of things that I did like 1, 2, 3. So 1 Kings 2, 3, again, Matthew 12, 36. So 1, 2, 3, 6. Uh, there's another one that's like a 1, 2, 3. So I just side name of the sermon is success is easy as 1, 2, 3. Unless you're you, I can't count that high. Uh, it says this, and observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to him and keep his decrees and commands. His laws and regulations, as is written in the law of Moses. Do this that you may succeed in all you do and wherever you go. That's biblical definitions of success. Okay? I jumped around a lot. Holy cow. So I googled the most rich, or I, I googled the most famous or the most successful people in this world. And what it came up was a lot of the same things. It was it was like your Bill Gates. It was your creator of Microsoft, who I just or not, not, when, um, not Windows, the same thing. Um, Apple, um, Google hit, like all these rich and powerful people came up. And it really broke my heart because you didn't really see any Christians in there. So like Google defines success even as rich and famous. And I feel like that's how we have defined success in our lives too. And throw that out. Because let me tell you this. It doesn't matter how big the empire you build, it doesn't matter how much money you pay, how many friends you have, it's all useless when you die. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, one of the, these successful people I've been researching, his name is Gary Vaynerchuk. Vaynerchuk? He goes by Gary Vee. And this is just a little side tangent I thought was really interesting. So, Gary Vee, okay, he goes to school uh, for business. And then afterwards, when he's 22, he starts working for his dad in a liquor store. And I'm not glorifying liquor stores at all. It's just, it's a really interesting part of the story. And he's really good at watching people, and he's really good at reading people, and he's really good at developing patterns within people. So he sits on like, in, in, the, in the store, and he watches people. He says they maybe make $20 a profit a day. And so because of that, he's able to watch people walk in, see their patterns. And so three years later, he's able to purchase his father's business for $3 million. Which sounds like a lot, but in like Southern Florida, that's chump change, right? And the first thing he does is he makes all of his, all the expensive things to the left. Because you notice, if you don't know what you want when you walk into the store, you immediately hand the left. So statistically, if you don't know what you want when you go to Walmart, you will statistically hang the left and start walking around the store starting to the left. So he was able to use his business mindset and put everything, all the, all the, all the, the expensive stuff on the left. And he was able to determine how much... Like, who buys this product, who buys this product, so on and so forth. And through that, he was able to turn that $3 million business into a $60 million business within three years. And now it's over $100 million. And then he created, this is my favorite part, this is why I'm telling the whole story. He watched uh, celebrities. And he, 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 he tried to figure out, why are celebrities so big? And he watched Taylor Swift and he watched Kanye West, okay? And he, he, he asked himself, why, is, why are they so famous? Why are they so popular? Why do they have the biggest social media following in the world? And the reason is this, because they engage with the little people. If you tweet Taylor Swift, there's a really good chance she's going to tweet back. I tried, it doesn't work. But, um, <laughs> she's talking, that's the thing. Apparently saying, Taylor Swift, I love you, will you marry me? Is, um, <laughs> but they engage. They engage with their crowd. And a lot of times you may say, hey, Taylor, will you come to my wedding and perform at my wedding? She'll show up. Because what she's realized and what she's understood is to be a successful artist, you don't have to do commercials to make a lot of money. All you have to do is engage these, in these people, and then the word of mouth gets around. So what he started doing is kind of the same concept. There was a guy that bought on, online, he bought $150 worth of product. And so Gary found this guy on Twitter and found this guy loves Jake Cutler, who's the Chicago, uh, Chicago Bears quarterback for the last time. And so... Like, this guy's just, I love Jay Cutler, he's my favorite, AJ Cutler, will you marry me? Stuff like that. Uh, so what he does, is he goes and he finds a $350 signed Jay Cutler jersey, and he attached it for free with this, with the product this guy bought, and he sold, and he, and he sent it off. And he's like, maybe this is going to help. And so, um, he waits around, business doesn't move. Two, three, four weeks goes by, until he gets a call from somebody shipping. He's like, you're not going to believe this. He's like, what's up? He said, somebody actually purchased 
worth of product from our business. He goes, really? And he said, here's what the note says. He says, hey, Gary, uh, I thought that was really cool what you did with my buddy John. Uh, uh, you know, he's super happy with it. P.S., you have a really great product and a really great price. That's why I spent so much money. P.P.S., I really love Bruce Springsteen. So, um, and they, weirdly enough, businesses all this role, this, it's called the Taylor Swift Law. Okay? It's true that you can actually like, Google it, look it up, the Taylor Swift Law. So the thing is, Gary Vee's become really successful. Now his net worth is over $200 million. And he actually goes for free and talks with businesses and, um, and tries to help them, you know, get bigger. But I'm going to tell you this right now. I'll tell you the whole story to tell you this. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if Gary Vee becomes worth $100 trillion. If, if what he's doing is not for God, at the end of the day, everything's not going to be successful. He's going to be completely unsuccessful. Can I get an amen? So what I tell you guys is this, students. Do what you're doing and do it for God, okay? If God calls you to be a CRNA, be the best CRNA you can for God, okay? If God calls you to be a graphic artist for the theater, do it for God, and you're going to be successful. In Proverbs, sorry, I didn't write this one down. In Proverbs 16, uh, 16, 3, it says, Commit to the Lord, but whatever you do, your plans will succeed. Do everything for God, and you will be successful. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you work at Pizza Hut. If you work at Pizza Hut for God, you will be successful in God's eyes. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 13, it says this. By grace God has given me, I lay the foundation as, wise, as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. To each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. For if anyone builds this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to the light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. So like I said, if you pursue your future for God, it's going to be successful. You know, the, the foundation is the, is the most important part of the building. If your foundation is weak, the building is going to fall. So if, when you go to school, or when you go to trade school, or whenever you go to work, your, your part-time job, whatever it is, make that foundation of Christ, and that, that building is going to succeed, okay? You may have a hundred buildings. You may do, be doing a million things at the same time, but if all those foundations are for, for Christ, you are going to be successful in God's eyes. But if you make that foundation fame, or fortune, or selfish desires, whatever it is, what's going to happen is one day you're going to die. And God is going to take that. He's going to say, you know what? Let me set this on fire and see how it stands before me. And it's going to crumble. And so what that's saying is everything that you do on this earth that doesn't involve God in some way is going to be worthless in the end. And when we look at King Solomon, King Solomon was one of the wisest men ever. He was such an obedient servant to God. So God was like, I'm going to give you one thing, whatever you want. And he's like, I want to know everything. And so here's King Solomon. He knows everything. And he just becomes like, you'd think you'd be happy knowing everything. Right? He falls in this dark depression because he's like, oh my gosh, everything I've been doing is worthless when I die. Because I can't take that money with me. I can't take that fame with me. I can't take the acres and acres and acres and acres that I own with me when I die. The only thing I can take with me is my relationship with Christ. That's the only way you can be successful in this world. So what I tell you guys is this. I love the fact that each one of you guys are going out and you're pursuing different fields. I love that in this church right now, We've got, everyone's different. You all work different jobs, you all do different things, you all live different lifestyles, and that's great, and I want to continue to encourage that. I just want to encourage, encourage you guys to do that for God. And it's crazy what can happen when you do. When I was in middle school, that was like, in middle school, like my freshman year, that was like the peak of wrestling for me. Um, I started getting good. I went my first two years, I was like 90, or I was one in 94. I won one match in my first two years, and then I lost 94. And then I started, like, somewhat becoming athletic. And then, like, the wins started coming easier. But, like, what I, what I loved to do was, like, before each match, I, mean, I, I didn't really have, like, a, a deep relationship with God yet. I knew he existed. I knew he was there. But I'd be like, hey, God, this match is for you. And I do fairly well. But every now and then, I would be like, uh, yo, girl, this match is for you. And I go with Kenneth, like, right off the bat. Uh, I didn't say it like that because then she'd be like, oh, my gosh, this why I'm so single. Um, but I remember one time, there's this kid I used to beat constantly all the time. And I remember my dog was sick, and like my dog meant the world to me, so I was like, this one's for you, Shushu. 
So I go out there and he just flat out loops me. And I ended up, I was like, and like, I felt like this, I was like God talking to me saying like, hey, you're not supposed to be doing things for me. And so I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then I ended up having the opportunity to wrestle him again that, that same day, and I whooped him. And so that just goes to show, like, that's what really taught me. Like, everything I need to be doing, I need to be doing for God. Because God's going to take care of me. He's going to protect me. Um, he cares about my success. He really does. And I'm going to end on this. I know this is really short. I expect the graduation a little longer. It's almost 11 o'clock, you know? Uh, it says this, Joshua 1, 1 through 9. It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord... Uh, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' name, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give you to them. Or give to them, the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as promised, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon. Um, not the city of Lebanon. Um, and the great uh, and from the great river to the Euphrates, all the Hittite countries to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you or, nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. And then he says this, be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave to you. Do not turn away from it, and do not, to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of law always on your lips. Meditate on it and pray day and night, so that you may be careful to everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So a lot of times, I mean, I, I don't know, did Joshua know like he was getting called up to be a leader. I know he was like Moses is eight, but like that. Would, I mean, I could imagine being unprepared like that. And God's like, I'm choosing you to go and lead these people. But listen, if you follow my lead, if you do what I say, if you do it for me, you're going to be successful. That's what He told Joshua right there. And this is the same thing to you. God is going to put some some idea, some thought in your heart. And he's going to say, Hey, I want you to go do this. Sometimes He may completely change your path once you get there. Sometimes we may follow follow our own selfish desires. But let me tell you this, wherever God takes you, if you follow him, if you do that for him, if you lead for him, you're going to be successful in God's eyes. And that's all that matters at, in, the, in the very end. Let's pray. Dear God, just thank you once again for these kids. Thank you so much for this opportunity to just be able to love on them and just to guide them. And I just pray, I pray that they pursue you. I pray that they run towards you. I pray that they just want to be successful in your eyes. Not to, this, not to the light of the world, but in successful in your eyes, God. I see a bunch of world changers, and I just pray that they go out and they make a difference in everyone's lives. I pray that they change the way the society thinks. I pray that they change the way the society is run. And I pray that we, as a country, in the end, are successful in your eyes. Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for this church. Thank you so much for these people. Thank you so much for Brother Dennis and everything everyone in this building has done, and even those who couldn't make it, Lord. We love you. We pray this in your name. Please. There's some realities that I think we all need to, to come to light on. And that is what the world defines, I think, as Tommy has very vividly allowed us to see today, is that the world's view of success is not anywhere close to what God uses as a measuring stick for success. I'll never forget, uh, Brother Glenn would, would say this statement quite frequently, and he would say it to me, maybe even more than anybody else. But he would say, the yardstick, the measurement that God uses for success is your faithfulness to Him.
And it makes no difference if you're going into first grade or you're going into fourth grade or you're going into ninth grade or you're going into college. Or if you're just going into the next day of your life, whatever it, whatever it holds, God says the yardstick of success is faithfulness. Would you bow with me? I want you to listen closely to this song that Brother Tim has prepared for us. And I want to make sure that your relationship with God is everything it should be and everything that He wants it to be in your life. Listen closely. Lord, I Your plans for us are to prosper, to grow. 
grow and to do well in this life, and not only in this life, but also our life to come, our eternity. God, let us recognize that the life here on this earth is temporary. It's like uh, a vapor. It's there for a moment, and then it vanishes away. So God, let us not put up all of our treasures here on earth, but God, let us recognize that we need to lay our treasures on it. Moth doesn't destroy, it, or rust doesn't corrupt. But where the things that are most important are families, our own soul, God, let us lay up our treasures in heaven. Lord, how we need you today. For our graduates, God, I pray that you'll surround them with your hedge of protection. Lord, whatever phase uh, the next life brings them, whatever adversity they may face, God, I pray that they'll always trust in the goodness of God and your provision for them. Father, help us to be faithful to you. Help us to serve you to the best of our abilities. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Now here's how I want us to end our service today. That chorus is probably one of the most important prayers that we can pray. Just an acknowledgement to God. God, I need you. Here's what the Bible says. He says, if you will draw nigh to me, if you'll draw close to me, then I will draw close to you. Wouldn't that be a great time to leave this service today in just a recognition to God, God, I need you. And as we recognize our need for God, he instantly says, I'll be with you wherever you go. Would you just sing that with him today? Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. Let's sing together.
is when God uh, can be revealed the most. And that's up to you and I, is to let people see the glory of God uh, in the midst of chaos and tragedy. And so uh, I pray uh, for our graduates, I pray for our church, uh, and I'm, I'm just excited to see what God has in store. Uh, here's the reality. It does it. This is the new norm for me, is the realization uh, that, that whether we're here or whether we're not, uh, whether I'm in control or not, or whether I have a say or not, God's bigger than all that I have in mind. And, and He is big enough to handle uh, your life. He's big enough to handle your adversity. And He is certainly big enough to bless you immensely beyond measure and beyond what you could ever dream or imagine. Uh, today I want us to be dismissed in prayer. And uh, I want us to pray for these graduates, uh, but even more than that, let's pray for our church, let's pray for our community, let's pray for our country, uh, that God will have his way in the midst of it all. Brother Randy, would you care to dismiss us today, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the service today, Lord, we just thank you for those that organize this, those that uh, put their heart and soul into this, and Lord, we just pray for the graduates, no matter what their course is going to be. Level their heads before, Lord. We just pray for guidance and direction for them. Lord, we just pray for their parents as well. Those that are in charge of them, that they will help in their uh, bringing them. Don't just discontinue that they're moving on to a different level. We always have to be there for them. We pray the church will be there for them, Lord. Yes. And don't forget those that are just up, and just up and coming, Lord. We just need to pray for each and every one of them. Lord, we pray for our country. We need healing across this land, Lord. We just know that you can do it. We'll just let you have the reins and let you, your power be. Revealed to those who don't know you, Lord. We just take these words that we've heard today and put them to use in our lives. We just ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Tommy, for everything. See you next Sunday at 10 o'clock.